A Beetlejuice sequel has been planned since forever, but the long-awaited sequel is here with a good portion of the original cast back, and at the time of recording, the sequel isn't out yet, but it's getting pretty good reviews so far, so it doesn't seem to be going down the Ghostbusters 2016 route, or Ghostbusters Afterlife, or Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, whatever you want. When you think about it, the original Beetlejuice film isn't as beloved as Ghostbusters, so maybe that's why we haven't had too much with regards to sequels, remakes or reboots over the last 30 years, but it has taken over 30 years to get to this point of a Beetlejuice sequel arriving. That is why I won't do two shows a night anymore, babe. I won't. I won't do. But I don't want to talk about the sequel because I said it isn't out yet. I want to talk about the original film, the cult classic, cult comedy, cult Tim Burton at his best. And he was on a hell of a run at this stage in his career. So let's take a look at the man, the myth, the legend, the juice himself. It's showtime. As always, I'm Al, this is the Geek In Review, thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this video, I really appreciate it, and if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and leave a like as well. Now, I was planning on dropping this on Monday, because I'm planning to drop movie reviews every Monday from now on, but my computer power cable snapped on Sunday night so I couldn't finish the upload and I had to wait for it to get delivered on Monday and I've just got it so this is the video going up. But going forward in movie reviews, at least the main ones for the week because I'm going to be changing a little bit with regards to the channel and I'll talk about that later on, are going to be going up every Monday so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. But let's get to the film itself. If you haven't seen it, why not pause this video and go and watch it? Because this is one hell of a weird, wild ride that the phrase it doesn't really or it wouldn't get made today flies around quite a lot today. But that's usually in terms of like, you know, films like American Pie and Sausage, not Sausage Party, because it's been a sequel, man. There's a TV show that just came out. But you know, that sort of ruder style comedy that you wouldn't get away with. But almost everything in this would not get made today if it hadn't already been so. I mean, the humour in it is so dark. There's so many references to suicide as well. And there is a few F-bombs, or at least one F-bomb in this film is rated PG-13. But as I said at the start of the video, Tim Burton was on a hell of a roll. This was his middle film between Pee-wee's Big Adventure and The Batman. And depending on your point of view or how much you love Tim Burton, you know, some people like all his films, some people think he dropped off around Mars Attacks or Planet of the Apes. I kind of agree with that, but the man has style and it is dripping all over this film and its production. But what's the story, you ask? Well, it opens with the death of a couple called the Maitlands, who realise that they didn't make it home after having a car accident. They find the now iconic handbook for the recently deceased and try and investigate their new plane of existence as the new owners of their home arrive and move in and start to make changes. Deciding that they don't want to live with the new residents, the Deets, the Maitlands journey to the afterlife using the handbook, which, when you get there, is random like a sort of government bureaucracy. They ask for help in removing the Dietz family from their house and they don't get any so they want to recruit a ghoul that they've seen advertised as a bio-exorcist called Beetlejuice. I'll get to why the spelling's different later on. So they decide to use him to do their exorcism and get rid of these pesky humans in their home. So they're forced to summon Beetlejuice for help and that's where the problems and the movie really kick off. Because it's nearly 30 minutes before Beetlejuice actually gets his proper introduction in this movie. In this film, as I said, it's 30 years old and I know we're used to three hour or two and a half hour plus films just now, but it comes in at just over an hour and a half and it's an incredibly tight film. I mean, there's no wasted scenes or fat on this script at all. Because absolutely everything in this film lands, but namely the title itself, Michael Keaton makes such an impact with this over-the-top dead pervert with an axe to grind, and it feels like it's his movie. Because although the title is Beetlejuice, it's really more about the Maitlands and their housing situation when you think about it. 
And there are a few other themes in this film as well that I'm going to talk about later on. Filmed on a budget of 15 million in total and just under 75 million at the worldwide box office, which was pretty solid at the time, this film didn't really land and have the cultural impact with something like Ghostbusters that I mentioned earlier on. But as I said, it's dripping with Tim Burton style, and he's the one that sort of wanted to mix the genres up and make it a bit more of a comedy. Now another reason that this maybe didn't land at the time as well as Ghostbusters is Ghostbusters had established faces and names with Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and all those guys, in fact most of the cast in there were established comedy actors. Whereas names like Winona Ryder, Tim Burton and Michael Keaton are all household ones now, they weren't back in the mid to late 80s. This was Ryder's first big film that put her on the map. But at the time, there weren't any star names in this. I mean, Gina Davis had just done The Fly, and Alec Baldwin hadn't really become Alec Baldwin yet either. Interiors, written by Michael McDowell, and it was his original vision that was pretty different to the final version that we got. He wanted Beetlejuice to be more a Jason Voorhees killer type than comedy ghoul. And he seen Beetlejuice as a winged demon wanting to kill Lydia instead of have her love him, and his motivation was to get his freedom by scaring people essentially. The movie changed hands a few times before it went into production, but it was ultimately rewritten once it was in the Geffen Company's hands. Burton signed on as a director after the script had been changed by a writer called Warren Scarron, who created things like the admin part of Life After Death and the Afterlife and made Beetlejuice more in line with what he is in the film. But they still didn't have any of these actors on board yet. Michael Keaton wasn't sold on the idea, and I understand why, because if you try to explain this film, it's a hard concept to wrap your head around, because so much of this stuff is visual in the way it looks, from the outfits to, let's say, the afterlife and all the makeup and special effects. This would be quite a hard idea to get your head around at the time. But he eventually did decide to sign on to play the main role, and he's the one that helped come up with the overall look of the character, like the sort of straggly hair that looks like he's been electrocuted, all the mess around his mouth, the teeth, the accent, all that is Michael Keaton, and he ad-libbed quite a few of the lines in this movie as well. But going back a bit, as I said, it's got quite a lot of household names in it now. Catherine O'Hara from Home Alone in Shit's Creek, Alec Baldwin from pretty much everything, including his new reality TV show, Gina Davis, and of course, Winona Ryder. Every one of them would go on to have huge careers in the 80s, 90s, and even today. Filmed in 1987, as I said, this was Burton's film before Batman. But one of the other original ideas, and this was from Tim Burton is he wanted Sammy Davis Jr. to play Beetlejuice and I've got to be honest I can you know I can kind of see that I would have liked to have seen how he done it because Beetlejuice is a bit of a showman and he is wearing that sort of velvet red suit at the wedding scene at the end in fact I think Beetlejuice is one of the greatest showmans that has ever been put onto the screen do you hear that Hugh Jackman? That is why I won't do two shows a night anymore babe I won't I won't do. Because although the film is over an hour and a half, Beetlejuice is hardly in it at all. His total runtime in the movie is somewhere around the 30 minute mark. And he, he steals every scene that he's in. Every scene with Beetlejuice has amazing comedy and one liners. Jeez, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a big decision, isn't it? I mean, I always said if I ever did it, I was going to do it once, and that was it. Well, <laughs> ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. But it's not just his movie, the entire cast and the performances, and especially the production, because I do think that that is a character in this film. Much in the way that Gotham kind of feels like a character in the Tim Burton Batman film, but even the background actors in the scenes where the Maitlands go to the afterlife and they meet all these weird people and they're sort of stuck in the physical situations that they died. Every one of these guys is great. All the sort of afterlife bureaucracy guys are fantastic as well. And as I said at the start of the video, you know, there is a lot of darkness in this. You see people that have been crushed by buses, that have been in air crashes, that have been burned, that have been shot that have committed suicide and that's what I mean by the sort of stuff that you wouldn't really get in a movie today. I actually wondered because I've not seen the sequel yet 
how much of that dark comedy is going to be in it because i've got to be honest i think it's probably something that they're going to drop now one thing i need to mention and it's something that bugged me for years and i thought i was going absolutely crazy till i watched reviews of this uh, and seen that people mention it as well the film is called beetlejuice the character is called beetlejuice but if you ever notice the way that it is written on screen after the title credit roll it actually says beetlegeist now there's a few theories about this the main one being that beetlegeist is the name of a star I think it's a star or a galaxy in our universe and for some reason or another it just gets pronounced Beetlejuice. There's been a lot of urban legends around this and I've not found anything that's too concrete or exactly establishes why it is. I would love to see if there's a video of the cast or Tim Burton or someone talking about this but no one actually says Beetlegeist I think in the film. So if you know about this let me know in the comments below because it's bugged me for about the last 20 years and I really want an answer to it. It was a hit with adults and kids, like I say, despite having a hard F-bomb. This was a PG movie and is one of the very few in Hollywood history that actually does feature that level of swearing. But apart from that, it's an oddly kind of family-focused film, or at least you could watch it with your family members. And it might scare the littler kids with some scenes, but there's not a lot of sort of adult or, you know, not safe for work jokes. I mean, I get the whole point of the Beetlejuice character as he's supposed to be repulsive, so, you know, there's no point complaining about that, because if you change that, it wouldn't make the guy funny. And for me, although Tim Burton is always going to be remembered for Batman, and quite frankly, so is Michael Keaton, this is their better film together. I love how weird and crazy it is. There's a lot of tonal and wild and crazy sort of shifts that go on throughout the plot. And just everything, let's say, all the way going back to the start with the sort of 1950s town that was very kind of Pee Wee Herman style, and all the thought that was put into this, like the, how the Maitland's house looked, how it looked after the Dietzes moved in, and of course, I keep talking about it, the afterlife vibe or whole government bureaucracy hell that everyone's just standing on a line waiting to talk to their caseworker. Now, the themes in this, some of them are obvious, some of them aren't that obvious. Let me know if you agree with them in the comments below. But of course, we've got the living and the dead versus each other. We've also got the working class and the upper class or the city and the country with the Maitlands and the Dietzes. And also calm versus chaos as well. I think that's the Maitlands and the Dietzes and the Maitlands and Beetlejuice or Beetlejuice and Dietzes. It works for pretty much everyone, no matter which way you move it about. And not a lot of people talk about this because... I don't think this is a film that people really heavily examine what it means or the impact it had. But you get the idea, if you want to look a little bit deeper, it's not exactly a metaphysical meditation on the afterlife, but there are some interesting plot points, and you know, it was the 80s with that whole rich and poor thing and city slickers versus country people, and I think that's something that's interesting that pops up in quite a lot of American cinema around that decade. Now, despite the fact that the film didn't really stand out with critics and wasn't really the cultural impact of other comedies around the time, the film did get recognised and actually won an Oscar for Best Makeup and Hairstyling, and if you ask me, quite rightly so. It should have won for Best Special Effects as well, if you ask me. I mean, I haven't looked up what was out this year, but this film has everything. It has new technologies and using old tropes going back to the 50s as well. I'm talking about all the stuff with the rotoscoping, the motion stop, the makeup, the props, prosthetics, all that stuff are absolutely outstanding in this. Even the little touches, like the bit where the Maitlands are digging Beetlejuice up in the model town and it's the sort of cork ground and the big heavy plastic grass. I love that. Just the way it looks and the fact that they fought to do that is absolutely mind-blowing if you ask me. The thing that stood out to me re-watching this because I hadn't watched it in a few years and it's kind of weird when you think about it is there aren't any villains in this, or at least the villain shifts. The Dietzes are sort of the role, as I said, as the city folk coming to this small town and just doing weird redesigns on this pretty nice house. But that then spins that role to Beetlejuice by the finale with everyone ganging up trying to get her to stop them. 
And again, if you want to do a deeper analysis on the film and the script structure, I think that that's worth noting. But hey, that's just me. Because although it might not be clear if he is the villain or not, he is obviously the star of the film. And he's got a great setup and intro as they relate straight away that the Maitlands have clearly made a mistake getting this guy involved. And I think it's a real testament to Michael Keaton's comedic ability that he does dominate this film with so little screen time. I mean, yeah, I know the look is sort of iconic or whatever, but Michael Keaton is a completely underrated comedy actor. I mean, if you've ever seen the Will Ferrell film, The Other Guys, he's brilliant in that as well, although he's in a supporting role. But I'd like Michael Keaton to do a little bit more comedy and a little less drama and a little less Batman because the guy's got the chops and he just needs to show them off a little bit more. Now, as you know, the sequel is coming out or has come out by the time you've watched this video and it's surprising that it's taken almost 40 years after the original was released to get to this point. Remakes, reboots and reimaginings are what cinema or Hollywood has been about since the mid-2010s and it's kind of odd that this franchise hasn't been touched. It could have been remade or adapted or there could have been spin-offs or sequels or any sort of, you know, version of comic or animated show. I mean, there was an animated show in the 90s along with a toy line, but with the amount of stuff that keeps getting rehashed, again, going back to Ghostbusters, we've had three Ghostbusters films in 10 years no one has dared go near Beetlejuice because there's just something magic about this movie that people love because there's just something magic about this movie that people love and honestly I think it's quite hard to replicate so it's going to be interesting to see if the sequel can get that magic back with all the original cast and Tim Burton as well I think it'll get some of it I'm a bit worried it's going to be a bit like Ghostbusters Afterlife where it's just a bunch of references, member berries, nods and easter eggs rather than focusing on plot and character development. But we're going to have to wait and see. If you have seen Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, by the time this video comes out, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And I really want to know how old you were when you seen the original Beetlejuice and how did that land with you? Did you get the humour? Were you too young and were you scared? That sort of thing because... I can't remember how old or how young I was when I seen this. I was probably under 10, and while I didn't get everything that was going on, it's definitely a film, as you can tell, that stuck with me. Now, as always, if you've made it this far, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. As I said, I'm going to be dropping a new movie every Monday, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Some of them you might have heard of, some of them you might not. Sometimes I might take requests in the community section of the channel as well. But let me know what you think, if there's any movies that you would like me to cover or any movies that you think need more attention. You can reach out to me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews or, as I keep saying, comment below. Because I want to hear from you guys and as always, my name's Al, thanks for watching. I feel like Italian. Where'd you go? Hey, come on, hey, where'd you go?